everyone. Welcome to today's Amicus Attorney Free Training Thursday. Today's topic will be mass billing presented by Darren Juby. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them into the sidebar and we'll get to them at the end if we have time. Without further ado, I'll turn it over to Darren and he can take us through the presentation. Thank you very much, Amanda. Good afternoon, everyone. And as Amanda said, welcome to this week's Abacus Next Free Training Thursdays webinar. This week, we'll be focusing upon mass billing within the billing module of Amicus Attorney. And uh, as Amanda said as well, my name is Darren Juby. I'm a senior training specialist here at Abacus Next, and my focus is the Amicus Attorney product line. And as she stated as well, as always, if anyone has any questions during our session today, please do utilize the questions field here in GoToMeeting. And time permitting, we will get to answering them towards the end of our session. And if not, please do include your email address and we'll happily follow up afterwards to provide you with the information that you do seek. So now, without further ado, let's begin discussing mass billing within Amicus Attorney. So the agenda for today's session, what is mass billing? How to initiate mass billing from the client's module? how to initiate mass billing from the files module, how to initiate mass billing from the transactions button, and then we'll do a walkthrough of mass billing itself. And of course, like I said, time permitting, we will get to your questions at the end here. So first things first, what is mass billing? Well, it's also referred to as batch billing. It is a fact that billing your clients regularly will result in more collected revenue and fewer client issues than if you wait to bill each client separately at the end of their case. This is why Amicus Attorney Billing makes it easy for you to bill many of your clients all at one time. You can bill for all of your open files or select the files for which you want to generate the bills. You could tell Amicus Attorney how you want the bills to be drafted and then with a single click, you can generate bills for a number of your files. It's like magic that makes month ends so much easier and less stressful. You can mass bill directly from your client list, the files list, or you can select different criteria to by which to bill by, such as the responsible lawyer, the file type, or the billing category. You can have Amicus Attorney go through all of your files and bill only those that have a minimum WIP or work in progress, if you will. Uh, let me rephrase that, a minimum WIP balance. So again, WIP being work in progress, or choose to bill fi on files that have an outstanding balance and more. When those bills are created, each file's billing preferences will be automatically applied. If you have flat fee or contingency cases, they will be billed according to the way you have set up the file. You can send your bills to draft, or they can be easily reviewed and edited if necessary or you can send your bills directly to final, where they can be printed and or emailed to your clients. Regardless of how you take advantage of this feature, automated mass billing allows for you to get your bills out quicker, easier, and more accurately. So now that we've talked about what is mass billing, let's get to doing some demonstration of how to take advantage of this feature. So, of course, we're in Amicus Attorney here, and as you can see, I'm logged into my office module, and you'll see I'm logged in as Heather Gavel. I am using the tutorial office that's built into Amicus Attorney for this, and I invite all of you, if you're ever trying something new, not sure how to do it or how to go about it, and you don't want to affect your real live data, please do take advantage of the tutorial office. It's built in there for situations like that so that you can learn without worrying about your real live data. So as I said, I'm in the tutorial office here and I'm going to go over to the billing module like so. So as you can see, here I am now. And so the first thing we're gonna talk about is how to initiate mass billing from the client's module. So over here on the billing side of things, we know on the attorney side, it's referred to as people. Over here on the billing side, it's referred to as clients. And of course, we also know that what we see in here is not necessarily the same as what we see over in the people module on the attorney side. It shows us all of our contacts, whereas here on the billing side, the contacts being displayed to us are actually those that are designated as primary clients on our billable files. So that's why you will sometimes note a discrepancy in the count that you see. Now, with all of that being said, the first way to initiate mass billing that we're going to touch upon, like I said, is from here in the client's module. So note how we can select multiple contacts here by either using the control or the shift keys. So I'm going to demonstrate that. I'll click on one, holding the control key, just like I would in Windows Explorer. I can select this one, this one. 
I could go down here and select Remy Williams and so forth. Now that's using the control key to, se to select each individual one. Now I could also, much like I can do in Windows Explorer, utilize the shift key while I'm trying to select multiple items. So let's redo our selections here. I'll click on Battalion Steel Company here as my first selection. And holding the shift key down on my keyboard, I'm going to select Ann Neighbor as my last selection and watch, and you'll note that it grabs the first and the last contacts that I've selected, or clients if you will, and everything in between. So that's the differences between using the shift key versus the control key. So depending on how we've made these selections, and again using the control or the shift key, now what we would do is right click and select the bill option. And you will notice that the Create Bills dialog does appear, as you're seeing here, and it's already on the Mass Bill tab. And you'll also note in the Client File selection that it has our selected clients. So if I was to click on here, you'll see there are all those clients that I had selected from the Clients module. Now we could proceed with the Mass Billing from here, but before we do that, let's explore yet another way that we can initiate Mass Billing. This time we'll do it from the Files module. So I'm just going to close out of here. And let me navigate over here in the navigation panel to the files module. Now as well, if I wanted to use the Go menu to navigate, as you can see, I could very easily do so. And I could also get back to the attorney side of things from here. That's the Go menu. Or I could utilize the system tray icon by going down here, right clicking on that amicus attorney icon. And as you can see, I can navigate through there. Now, I am here in the Files module, and yet again, we're going to utilize the same Control and Shift key type of selections here. So, I will select the first file. Holding my Control key down, I would then select this one, and so forth. Or, I could select this one, and holding the Shift key down, I could go to there and select that. So again, I've selected a multiple or a multitude of files here in this case by using either the control or the shift keys. And what I'm doing now is right clicking and selecting the bill option. And so yet again, we are at the create bills dialog here. And this time, you'll see that while we're on the mass billing tab, instead of it being the client file, the client's selection here in the client file selection area, we actually have it under the files. And again, if I was to click on that file folder, you'll see that it is listing the files that I have selected from here. Now, we could proceed with mass billing from here, but before we do so, let's explore yet one more way that we can initiate mass billing, and this time we're going to do so using the Transactions button. So I'm just going to cancel out of here, and I will close out of here. Now, the Transactions button, you will see it here in the Files module, right here and you'll see that I have the bill option there. But as well, if I go to the Clients module, there is that same Transactions button right there, and again, I do have the bill option from here. Now, if I was to go to Time, Fees, and Expenses, just doing this for demonstration purposes, you will note that we do not see the Transaction button here. If I go to the Trust module, you'll see that we do have the Transactions button here, but it's a little bit different because it's more geared towards trust-related transactions. So we wouldn't do it from there, but we could also do it from the billing module itself using the Transactions button. So just to recap, before we go any further, we've got the Transactions button here in the billing module. We have it in the Clients module. And we have it in the Files module where we can utilize the Transactions button to generate bills by selecting the Bill option. So I'm just going to go back to the Billing module just to do it from a different area this time. And so this is the third and final way that I'm going to show you guys today on how to initiate mass billing. So you note I haven't made any selections whatsoever. I'm simply going to select the Transactions button and I will select Bill. And in doing so, up again comes the Create Bills dialog, but this time you will note that it's on the Bill file tab. So this time we actually need to navigate to the Mass Bill tab. Well, that's very easy. We can just do so by simply clicking here like so. And so from here we can make any selections that we want using the selectors and the filters as we see fit. For instance, we could change the AR date. 
very simply by clicking there and then making our selection. I could do the same thing for the include charges up to date. As you can see, I can very easily navigate through the calendar and I could select any date that I want. I'll leave it as today. Now you'll also see that we can filter based on either clients or files here in the client file selection area. So much like what we saw demonstrated earlier when we made our selections either from the clients module or from the files module, we could simply come in here, select that radio button, and as you can see, it brings up the select people dialog for me. So I could select Janet, I could select Mr. Burwood here, uh, Mr. Cooperman, why not? And I could also bring it on uh, Ms. Fairchild here as well. So in clicking OK, you will see that I have now selected those four clients, and those would be the four clients on which I'd be doing this mass billing run. Now, I'm just going to remove them all from here because I don't want to keep that selection in place. I probably, actually, let's just cancel that, and we'll set that back to there. So again, as you can see, it's reset there. Or I could select the Files option. So in doing so, you will see that up comes the Select Files dialog. So again, I could do like so. I could select the Bailey Ray Kipling. I could say the Burward versus Wright, uh, Blank versus Biddle. And while well, I've already grabbed one of Burwood's files, so I might as well grab the other one as well. So there's the Burwood directorship. And I, I'll grab Mr. Cooperman's file here as well. So I could say OK on that. And in making those selections, those files, as you can see here, would be the ones on which this mass billing run would be run. So I'm going to just say cancel on that, and I'll change that back to all. I want to keep my net cast as wide as I possibly can. Now, we can also filter based on responsible lawyer. As you can see here, by simply clicking on the selected button, radio button, as I should say, I could have also clicked on the select people icon there. But as you'll see, the select people dialog comes up, and I could select myself, Lindsay Dole, Perry Mason. Those are the users in my work group. If I don't see the person I want in my work group, I could simply select all from that drop down right there. And as you can see, I now have a list, a full list of all of the attorneys in my firm. So I could make a selection here, for instance, I could say Lindsay Dole and say OK. So as you can see here now, any, ma any b files that would be included in this mass billing run would be ones on which Lindsay is the responsible lawyer. So again, I want to keep my net cast as wide as possible, so I'll set that back to all. And we'll talk about the next filter, and that's the file type. So again, I could do selected, and as you can see, up comes the file types dialog, and I could select the file type that I wanted to, or the file types. So I could say civil litigation, litigation, any criminal, any criminal defense, and so forth. I'm presuming you guys all get the gist of what I'm trying to demonstrate here, so I'll just simply click cancel here but I could include those file types and only those file types in this mass billing run if that's how I want it to go. Again, I'll leave the selection as all. And the last filter that I want to talk about here before we talk about this area over here is the billing category filter. So again, I could say selected, and then from there I would click on this dropdown and select the billing category for which I want my, bass, my this mass billing run to be filtered by. So I could say only my billable files, only my fixed fee files, only my contingency, and so forth. So again, I will change that to all, and I want to briefly talk about what we're seeing over here. So over here, we also see some file inclusions and exclusions. So for instance, we've got this one here, bill if the total new, and you'll see we've got a drop down here to say charges, which would be fees and expenses. We could set this to only be looking at fees or only at expenses. Now, if I've selected one of those options, I could put a dollar value in there. And that would be, as you can see, it's a greater than symbol here. So bill if the total new charges in this case are greater than whatever amount I put in here. Now as well, I could check this option off to say create bill for past due accounts that are greater than a certain amount. And if so, I'd, if I've selected that, I'd want to put an amount in there. I'll just deselect that, but as well, I could say, check this one off and say, create bill if payment since last bill. Now, I'll also just briefly touch upon these items here. There's the interest settings right here, so I could click on that, and if I wanted to, I could apply interest to any overdue accounts. I could put in what I want my grace period to be, and I can select from this drop down how I want to calculate the interest. Is it as of the invoice date or as of the grace period? 
and then from there I can put in the interest I want charged and so forth and I can also select my compounding frequency here. Now, I'm not going to spend much more time on that I'll just quickly cancel out of there but one other thing I want to show you guys here before we proceed to do this mass billing run is this check for unposted time button that you see right here. Watch what happens when I click on this. So it's going to generate a report for us here in just a moment. And there it is there. So I'll just maximize that so everybody can see nice and clear. So this report displays to us any unposted time entries that, unless they are posted, of course, will not be included in this mass billing run. So as we all know, if a time entry is not posted, it's not billable until we've posted and it becomes work in progress. So right now, this is showing us a list of our unposted time entries. So for instance, if I wanted to include one or more of these, I could very easily do so from here by simply clicking on the description here of this item right here. So you'll see this is a time entry for the widget co share purchase file. So if I click here, as you can see, it does open up that time entry detail for me. And I could simply click on the post button from here to post that time entry. And now if I wanted to, I can refresh this report by clicking there and you'll see that that time entry is no longer showing on this unposted time entries list because it has now been posted. So it can be included in this particular billing run. So I'll just do one more to see how that was done and because it's for the same file, so we'll just do the post there. And again, let me refresh that report. And as you can see, that one is now gone. So I'm just gonna quickly close this report. And so let's do our mass billing run here now. So to initiate everything, we will click on the apply change selection button here. <clears throat> and so in doing so, Amicus now does a run through all of our billable files. And for those that meet the selected criteria, they'll be shown in the list below as you see here. So as you'll note, some of these files are grayed out, if you will, or kind of uh, dim text, if you will, for lack of a better way of putting it. And you'll note in the eligible column, there is a no, and there's a reason why. Whereas in this case, as you see with the Matthew Aladdin one, it's bolder text, and there is a yes in the eligible column. So the, there's all the files that we are going to be including in this particular mass billing run. So the first thing that I recommend doing, especially while you're still getting used to the program, is to do send them to the draft first. So let's click send to draft. You'll see it's sending the invoices. Now the reason I do suggest that you proceed in this manner is so that you have a, the opportunity to review the draft bills that have been created and confirm that all is good and ready to proceed before you hit to the final billing stage. So here's a list of all the bills that we just generated. And as you can see, there's a breakdown when we click on each one of these. There's the fees, which would be our time entries. There's the expenses. If applicable, there would be information here regarding any transfers of either trust or general retainer. And also, if applicable, in the sense that there was more than one uh, attorney working on a particular file, and thus inputting time entries and so forth, then as you can see, we get a breakdown of how each attorney is going to be, um, or how the payments will be dispersed according to each attorney. So uh, just for the, due to time constraints here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna move along here now. We'll presume that we have uh, taken a look at all of these. I could do a print here. So as you'll see, I'm just gonna select the option to print on screen. And if I say okay, what it's going to do is print out on the screen here for me. Now I could do this in physical form as well. As you saw, I did have the option to send them to my printer, but I'll, I'll uh, maximize that so we can see. So there is our draft bills. And I could scroll through each one as you can see here. And you'll also note that the invoice number shows draft because we're in the draft bill stage. That won't change until we post these to final billing. So as you can see, I could scroll all the way through to the last bill that I just created. So let me just close this very quickly. And so I've taken the time to review all of my bills. Everything looks good. It's time to send them to final so we can get these posted and sent out to our clients. So let's do so. I'll click on send to final here, as you can see. 
And you'll note that they all were selected there, and I could have toggled this guy right here, which is the select or deselect all checkbox. You'll see the same thing here in the final bills. Now, all these are now my final bills, so let's do a print and post on all of these. And there again is the list of the bills, and as you can see in any cases where there was a transfer, you'll see it's showing us that information as well. It's showing us the net bill value, the charges that were on the bill, and so forth. So let's do a print and post on this, just so we can see the workflow involved here. So you'll see I clicked on the print and post button. You'll see it's posting my invoices, posting invoice 12 of 22 and so forth. There's our progress bar going across. And again, I get the option of how I want to print them. I will deselect printer and I will select screen for the purposes of our training session here. And there again, as you can see, are the bills we've generated. And now you'll note that the invoice number is showing us a real invoice number. And that's something that's taken from the firm settings in Amicus Attorney. And that value will increment as each bill is generated. So as you can see, we could go through there. And so there is all of our final bills. So let me just close that. And as you'll see here in the billing module now, there is the outstanding bills that we just generated. There's the date on them. And if we wanted to, we could easily make our payments from here by simply right-clicking and selecting the payment option and going from there. So that, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, is mass billing. I do apologize for going through it a little quicker than I normally would like to, but I do have another training session coming up um, at, the, at the half hour mark here. So if there's anybody that has any questions about what we've discussed and demonstrated today, please do feel free to submit them now, and I'll try to get the answers for you as quickly as we can. Okay, so I'm not seeing any questions coming in there. So if there are any questions that you guys want to have answered, by all means, do feel free to follow up with us or input them into the question field now. Uh, oh, here we go. Can you use email to send the bills in mass billing? Um, as of right now, uh, I know that that's something that we're working on, but right now the mass billing won't generate ma a mass amount of emails for you, so you would still have to generate an email and attach the uh, the applicable bill to that email. I know that's something that's been talked about is coming down the pipeline, um, so please do keep note uh, on our announcement screen that does come up in the latest version of Amicus Attorney and keep note of any uh, communications that you might receive when the next update or updates are coming along, and that should be something that we see, if not in the next update, probably coming along in the very near future because I know it's been something that's been requested multiple times and I, I know I've had that question broached to me multiple times so And like I was saying, folks, if there are any additional questions, by all means, do feel free to follow up with us, and we'll get that information out to you as quickly and efficiently as we possibly can. But it, do, it does look like we've reached the end of our session today, folks. I do apologize uh, for the shorter session today, but I do thank everyone for attending and participating in today's Abacus Next Free Training Thursdays session on mass billing in Amicus Attorney. Next week, we hope to see you all here for our session on precedents within Amicus Attorney. And again, thank you for all, all for attending and have yourselves a wonderful rest of the day and week.